Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my CentOS series. And in today's video, I want to go over one of my favorite commands. So to illustrate this example, what I want to do is find the top five processes on my system that are using the most CPU. So to do that, I'm going to run CPU5, just like that. I'll press enter. And we could see that um, even though this output is wrapped a bit here, so I have Chrome running a couple of times. I have Firefox running a couple of times. I don't think it's going to be a surprise to anybody that on a laptop, the top five CPU hungry processes are all related to web browsing. But you know, the output is wrapped here because I have the font size so large. I keep the font size large because I want it to come out clean in the video. But you get the idea. I was able to run CPU five and it gave me output that shows me what the top five CPU hungry running processes are on my computer. But this isn't the command I wanted to go over. If you run this command, it's not going to work. So what's up with that? So actually, the nature of today's video is all about bash aliases. So if I do alias CPU5, we could see that this command right here is actually an alias and it's an alias to this command right here. So if I was to go ahead and run that just by itself, you know, it's going to give me the same output, but I don't want to remember all of this. I mean, I can, and I can type it every single time, but that's going to get old. I think it's easier to type CPU five rather than typing all of this every time I want to do this. And that's what an alias actually is. With alias, what you can do is basically create an alias to another Linux command. I can even do, you know, for example, alias turtle. This is how you create one, by the way, equals ls. And then I could type turtle and it runs ls. That's absolutely useless because ls is just two characters and turtle is more than that. Turtle is six characters. So I've increased my workload here by creating this alias and that's not very useful. But in the case of the CPU5 command, I think this is an example of an alias that is actually very useful. And you could get very creative with this. I mean, you can create your own commands. You can just shorten long commands. I mean, for example, I could type the word clear and I, I've seen some people do alias C equals clear then they could just type c and then enter and it clears the screen but you could do control l and you can argue which one is more useful but you know the thing is again whatever is useful to you you can create your own commands one thing i'll mention too is that if we open a new shell or if i close the existing one i'll just open a new window here i'm going to type cpu5 doesn't work so that is session specific i'll close this you know it still works here and Basically, what's going to happen is if you want to retain an alias, you'll need to add it to your bash RC file. And that way, every new shell that you open will automatically have that alias already there for you. And you don't have to recreate it every time. I'll get to that in a minute. But let's go ahead and see some examples of aliases that I think are useful. This video is sponsored by Linode, my cloud infrastructure provider for over two years. Linode provides Linux servers that make it easy and affordable to host your own app, site, or service live in the cloud. Whether you're a Linux power user or just starting out, you can use Linode. You can start from scratch and fully customize your server for any application, or use Linode's one-click apps to deploy game servers, WordPress sites, personal VPNs, and much more. You can even upload and run your own image. Servers can be easily scaled up or down, so you only pay for what you need. And regular backups are also available, so you'll never lose your work. Best of all, Linode comes with 24-7 support that is 100% managed by humans by phone support or support ticket. To get $20 in free credit when you create your new Linode account, sign up at linode.com slash learnlinuxtv. The link is in the description. I'd like to thank Linode for not only being awesome, but also for their continued support of my channel. I really appreciate it. Now let's get back to the video. So here's a good one. I'm going to run alias, install, 
equals sudo dnf install and then enter. And what that allows me to do is simply do install GIMP, just like that. Or whatever the package name is that I want to install. I'm not going to go ahead and go through the process of installing that. But you get the idea. When I want to go ahead and install a package on my CentOS system, generally I run this and then the name of the package that I want to install. But I've simplified everything I've highlighted here with just the command install and that's all I need to remember. Now that's certainly very easy to do, but I could simplify this all the way down if I wanted to, to simply I. I could do I, GIMP, and that's even easier. So you can go as abbreviated as you want here. Basically, it's all up to you. What alias do you want to create and how easy do you want to make it? All you have to do is just, you know, memorize it. Actually, you don't have to memorize it because if you ever forget what aliases you have on your system, you could just simply run the alias command by itself and it's going to give you a list. Now, some of these I've actually created here. Obviously, you know, I created this, this one right here. This is a relatively lame example. But you see the one that I started off with right here is on the list. And we even have the alias for LL. That's why we are able to use LL to do LS-L because that's an alias that was created for us. So a lot of these are, well, created for us and are default on the system. But if you create some aliases and you forget what they were, you can always go here and, you know, in your terminal, you could run alias and get a list. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, back to some fun examples. So here's another one that I like. I'm going to go ahead and paste this. I copied it off camera. So I have an alias named reload. And what it's going to run is going to source bash RC. And what this will do is if I make any changes to the dot bash RC, I could simply source it and it'll apply the changes so I don't have to close the shell and reopen it. Moving on from there, another one that you might find useful, alias, let's do upgrade, equals sudo dnf upgrade. So I'm just simplifying this just a little bit. Run upgrade, see if I have any package updates. I probably do, yes I do, but I'm not gonna go ahead and run those, but you get the point. I was able to simplify the DNF upgrade, not simplifying it by a whole lot, but simple enough for me. The next example I'm going to give you guys is basically the same thing as the example I started with. You know how I started out with CPU5 to show the five most CPU hungry processes. I'm going to paste this here because I'm too lazy to type all of this. And you could pretty much look at the name of this alias and you know exactly what it does. It's the same thing. It's just going to show me the top five memory hungry processes. So if I run mem5 now, you know, you could pretty much guess that, of course, the web browsers are going to be the stars of the show when it comes to memory usage, just like they were with CPU. But on a Linux server, it's even better because, you know, you can get a better view of the processes that are using a lot of memory. So what about uh, storage space? I mean, how do we find out what the biggest directories are when we want to find out what's taking up all the space? So what I could do, I'm just going to go ahead and paste this in here. We have dir5 is the alias, and it's going to show us the folders that have the most stuff in them, basically. So what I'm going to do is cd into Etsy. Maybe I'm curious in there what the top five biggest directories are. I'm going to run dir5. And of course I get some permissions denied. That's fine. I don't really care because the, you know, the example still works, right? So we get some output here and we can see some of them here, even though we had the permissions errors, we really can't trust the output because, um, you know, some of these folders aren't being counted for, but you get the idea. We were able to see the biggest directories in Etsy. And of course those are those directories. So that's pretty cool. Here's another fun example. I will paste it in, and the alias is speed test. Now this is really cool, but I wanna caution you that I'm not really sure how well this actually works. What this is supposed to do is run a speed test right on your command line, and that's pretty cool because you can simply run speed test anytime you're curious what your bandwidth speed actually is. However, I've had some doubt as to how accurate this actually is, but this is a good example of how useful these aliases can get. 
So I'm going to go ahead and run this and then see what happens. And of course, you know, Python command not found. So what I'll do is see if that'll run under Python 3, which is what we're using nowadays. And let's try it again. It looks like it's working. And, you know, the results aren't actually accurate because, you know, this is an older laptop with an older wireless card. It's not even capable of actually supporting the full speed of my Wi-Fi connection, let alone my uh, actual internet connection. But you get the point. I was able to run a speed test from the command line, and I created an alias to do that. I'll have these aliases in the description below this video. And you can check out those aliases, and then maybe if you want to, you can add them to your system. Now, one thing I do want to mention, though, is that I don't remember where I got these aliases from. So I really want to give credit where credit is due. There's some smart people out there that came up with these. I did what a lot of Linux users do and just Googled around um, years ago for what some cool aliases are and found a bunch of them, and then I just saved them. So thanks to whoever came up with these. Um, there's a few that I came up with, and a few of those are actually some that I found on Google. So um, just so you guys know, I want to give you that disclaimer. I don't want to take credit for those because I didn't create all of them. But the point was to illustrate how awesome aliases are, and I think I've done that. But before I let you guys go, there is one thing that I do want to make sure that I mention. I think I might have mentioned this at one point or another, but just in case I didn't, I can basically edit the bashrc file. I'm in the root of my home directory. And when you run this, of course, you'll get in the text editor your default bashrc file. And every Linux distribution ships one by default. So what I like to do is I go here to the end, and then I just create a section. I'll just say aliases. And then I'll go ahead and paste an alias right here just to give you guys an example. And actually, I'll not repeat past mistakes, and I'll change this to Python 3. Save the file. And then what I can do is open a new window. And normally this wouldn't work because, like I mentioned, aliases are in that particular session. So now that I've added that to my bash RC, it will work in any subsequent shell. So I should be able to simply run speed test and do the same thing again. And sure enough, it looks like it's working. So there you go, guys. I hope you love this video because I really enjoy aliases. They're a lot of fun. So go crazy with this. Play around with it. Google around. See if you can find some cool aliases. And if you do find something awesome, go ahead and put it in the comments below. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. And I will see you guys in the next video here pretty soon. So thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.